Oh, it's that time of year again where it's finally cool enough to get up in the attic and run some more ethernet cable in the house. We're gonna be doing a total of eight drops, uh, some for some cameras and four ethernet drops behind our TV. But there's only one problem. The TV's mounted already and it's also too low. So we have to remount the TV and after remounting it, then we have to figure out where we want our new or our four new ethernet drops to go. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out so we can get up in the attic and start adding more ethernet drops around the house. And also, by the way, this video is totally sponsored by FS. They heard that I had this project in mind, so they sent me a thousand feet of Cat6A cable, as well as some other things uh, that we'll show later on. Uh, so yeah, thank you FS for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate that. After many bottles, I finally convinced the wife to allow us to move the TV from above the fireplace mantle onto the sidewall here, and I mounted it before we had this decorative piece underneath it. The wife went out and got this thing, and turns out it actually impacted the TV, but only barely. So that means that it actually impacts the Samsung logo, preventing us from keeping the TV more flat. And on top of that, it makes the cables behind where the soundbar is very tight. However, I think the aesthetic looks good overall. I'll be using this light in the living room as a reference point. Staying to the left of the light will allow me to drill a hole more accurately through the 2x4 so that way when I pass the cables through from the attic they'll be in about the right place. Despite the soundbar blocking a portion of the TV, it hasn't been an issue because most of the content we watch here is in widescreen anyway so the soundbar is in line with the black bars. However, I want to remount the TV higher anyway because I plan to purchase a center channel speaker that will be mounted underneath the TV, so we need to raise it up at least 10 inches to accommodate uh, any future in-wall speakers. After removing the TV, I did need to figure out where the bottom of the TV would be if I were to move the wall mount bracket higher up on the wall. So that's basically what I'm doing here is doing some basic math, trying to figure out where the wall mount needs to sit so that the bottom of the TV isn't blocking the center channel speaker in the future. I marked up the wall and then got the pilot holes drilled for the TV mounting bracket. And then after this, we just need to figure out where we're gonna pass the cables down from the top of the wall to the base of the wall. I found these really neat wall boxes that allow you to pass electrical cables from the bottom of the wall to like a higher place on the wall. And also they have little cutouts that allow you to pass other cables through them as well. So like if you wanted HDMI or RCA cables or stereo cables, whatever it may be, you can pass those down as well and have two separate things. Now I could have rerouted the um, outlet there, but honestly, I didn't want to uh, mess with any of that. It's just easier to set up something like this, but we're not gonna be plugging in anything from the outlet to the wall mount uh, box or wall mount pass-through box, whatever you want to call it. We're actually going to be plugging that into a battery and then we'll be passing all our HDMI and ethernet uh, through that box to up above, below the TV. So everything, all the cables should be nice and hidden behind the TV. And uh, yeah, things will look, look great, I think. FS was also kind enough to send over a single gang keystone plate with four ports. So we'll be putting that probably right over here as far left as the electrical as we can go, so that way there's just no interference. I don't think there will be anyway, but we're gonna go as far left as we can with that, and then we'll run the ethernet down to here, and then this will just go out to all of our devices that we have. Uh, I may even run ethernet cables from here down. Actually, that wouldn't make sense. Yeah, I may run them down with this stuff. It doesn't matter. It'll be fine. Okay, I think it's time to go in the attic now, and we need to drill a hole above where the living room TV is, so that way we can run cables down that wall. And then we need to pull cables uh, from the network closet or from the living room uh, to the other room. But, oops. But, part of the problem I have is I only have one spool of cable. So that means we're gonna have to pull each line individually. But I think I have a trick up my sleeve. But first, let's worry about drilling these holes and then I'll show you what I think I should do or what the best approach is to do if you don't have uh, more than one spool of cable. Uh, I'm getting too old for this, y'all. Alley you. Not too bad for an old guy.
I have no idea if you guys can see me, but um, I made it over to where I think I need to be, but I'm basically looking for that light bulb uh, that's in the middle or center of the living room so we can use that to orient to where we need to be so we can drill down. So I've got to find it. Just over there is the living room light, so I'm pretty sure I'm oriented in the right place. And where I need to drill, there are four nails in the way. So we're gonna have to drill a hole between them, hopefully not hitting any of the nails on our way through. And then we're gonna pass all of our cables down through that hole, uh, through this two by four here. With our hole drilled in the two by four in the attic, we're now ready to start running some ethernet cable through the house. First up, we're gonna attach this ethernet cable here to the fish tape that's hanging through the hole in the wall. Uh, we'll be using electrical tape to attach the ethernet cable to that fish tape. So we just gotta get all of this unspooled somehow so we can, can begin that process. And as you can see here, I've done this a million times and it works perfectly fine. Uh, attaching ethernet to uh, fish tape with just electrical tape. All right, here's a closer look at that so you can see how it looks. And then here's the server closet where we're gonna actually be pushing that ethernet cable down through the wall and then grabbing it through the hole on the rear. Since we only have one spool of cable, the important thing that I wanted to do here was I actually ran this cable all the way up the wall, across the attic and down into the server closet where it's supposed to go. And now that I know the appropriate length, I'm just gonna cut off, I have excess on that end, but I'm also gonna leave myself plenty of room on this end just in case. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to have three more cables the same size by pulling this cable back down from the attic. And we will just make three of the same length. With all four ethernet cables now matching in length, I'm just using electrical tape to bind them all together. And then I'll attach them to the fish tape that I'll use to pull them up into the attic with, also using electrical tape. This method is tried and true and has worked for me for many years now. Back into the attic we go once again so we can pull up those ethernet cables from the living room and then pass them down to the server room. What's funny is I actually managed to get these stuck somehow while pulling them up. Thankfully my wife was home so we could work together to get those untangled or else I would have had to go all the way back down the stairs, get them untangled, pull them all over, and then go all the way back upstairs just to pull them up again. So yeah, thanks love. All right, got our ethernet pulled down from the attic on this side, on the server side. Uh, I've got plenty of excess on this side. Um, I think that's gonna be more than enough, especially uh, if we uh, terminate it by like just an inch on each thing a couple of times. So now we need to go back to the TV and cut that end off and uh, we'll be ready to start terminating. Okay, so we clearly don't need this much cable on this end, so I'm probably gonna cut about that much off and then we'll just use this excess cable to make cables in the future for whatever we need uh, but at least we know we have plenty and we don't have to worry about anything all right so check this out this is actually a pretty nice cable it's uh the wires are nice and thick the jacket's nice and thick and the colors are very easy to see as well i usually always have trouble with this uh, in the past i've always thought these brown cable was red uh, but this definitely looks like it's not red so I'll take everyone's word for it that it is brown. All right, let's get to terminating. Part of the sponsorship, FS also hooked us up with these keystones uh, that I'll be using on this end. And FS also sent us some keystones or a keystone patch panel on the server side. So huge thanks to FS for sponsoring this video and thanks for sending all this stuff over. All four ethernet cables are now keystoned. So that was pretty easy. And we're just gonna get these inserted into the single gang keystone wall plate and then of course get that mounted to the wall itself. And then after we're done with that, we're just simply going to start cleaning up everything, get whatever cables we need passed from the top of the wall to the base of the wall, so that things like HDMI and whatnot. And then we're also gonna to have to get the um, electrical boxes connected together. I actually forgot about that part. Here's where I'm connecting the boxes together with the power uh, cord that comes with them. And I'm also pushing down an HDMI cable from the top box down the wall to the bottom box. And it's important to not screw down the bottom box until you pass through all of your cables because it just makes everything easier um, to pull them basically through the bottom box since the opening is on the bottom and not the top. We have all our cables where we want them and we just need to get everything plugged in and we're pretty much almost done. We just got to get the TV mounted again. 
Well then stand far away and let me know when the hooks are in the right place. Can I be seen on the... No, come on out. Alright, just stay over here. Where are you going? Stay over here. <laughs> you won't be able to see the hooks. Just stay right there. With the TV mounted to the wall, this pretty much wraps up this portion of the video before we move on to running more ethernet from the server closet to the outside of the house for cameras. Now, I think this really turned out great. As you can tell, there are no cables to be seen anywhere because they are run behind the wall uh, between the decorator piece and the TV. And eventually I'd like to add a center channel speaker underneath the TV and that would look really nice. And then we'll eventually have an end wall left end and wall right speaker as well next to the TV and we'll probably have a nice surround experience and viewing experience in the future because of all the additives. Here in the server closet I had just finished adding the keystones to each of the four ethernet cables that we ran behind the TV and we'll be adding those to the FS patch panel that you see here. All right so what I want to do is here's my office and I would like to run a camera to be somewhere on this side, uh, so this backyard over there, and I want the camera to be facing out this way towards the street, so that way I can see uh, like if anyone were to come towards the fence, uh, or the gate actually that's behind me, and generally just to watch this entire area and out to my neighbor's yard. I think that'd be cool. So we need to get a cable out here somewhere, and then what I would also like to do, um, hopefully, is get two ethernet cables run on this corner of the house as well as ethernet cables on that far corner of the house as well so that way in the future if i want to add more cameras i can have them watching this way to the yard and that way into the yard as well as the rear gate out here all right you guys can't see this but i've got my soffit kind of pulled away a little bit and i'm going to use these rods to help push the ethernet cable up into the attic from this side since there's like a wall that I kind of have to crawl over and I don't want to hit my head on some nails. So I'm thinking with, this is about 15 feet of rod. Uh, with this, I can push it far enough into the attic where I can grab it and then bring the cable to the server closet. Uh, so that's the game plan. I've never used rods before. I've seen people use these on their channels in a lot. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems to work for them. Hopefully I can get it to work for me. And I probably don't need it this long, but we're gonna we're gonna go with the max length here, because I don't want the cable to fall out or fall back through when I am trying to reach it from inside the attic or like going back up inside the attic. And this is what I mean by having the soffit pulled away, just a little hole there, because I don't know how to unlatch the soffit, so that way I can run the Ethernet cable through. All right, so just like before, I'm going to use electrical tape to wrap around the ethernet cable and the rod so that way they stick together real good and we don't have to worry about them unbinding you can i think you can use any tape you want but i don't know i've just been using electrical tape for years now it's never done me wrong all right well i'm apparently stuck on something so Guess that means I'm pretty much all the way in. Just gonna go inside the attic now and start pulling on the other side. Almost impossible to tell, but the rod and ethernet cables right there. So we just have to make our way through all of this to get there. And uh, that's gonna be fun. Here's another reason why I didn't want to try and walk over there. Not only is it just a awkward, tight space, but there's even, and I didn't know this until now, um, I guess some cardboard or something kind of blocking where that soffit is. Don't know what the purpose of that stuff is. It's only on this side of the house, funnily enough. Um, but yeah, so it's good that we, we had that rod or else it'd be hard to get through there. It's getting dark quick, so we gotta make this cable as quickly as possible. So that way, we don't, we can do this while we still have sunlight and I don't have to like get a flashlight or anything. So this looks like a good spot. 
Um, yeah, we'll just mount it like right here. Just, just in the nick of time. It's getting a little dark out here. So glad that we could get that mounted. Now we just need to go on the inside of the house and finish the other side of the cable and we'll be done with this camera. All right, it is getting dark AF out. And I don't need to be running cable right now, but I'm going to anyway, because we're already This video is already getting kind of long, and I just want to get as much of it out of the way as possible. So, okay, we are finally done running Ethernet for now. So I got both ends of the Ethernet cables finished late last night after I started recording because it got too dark, and also there really wasn't much else to show after making cables. We got, um, just now we, I got my last Ubiquiti camera configured to watch or adopted and set up appropriately so that way it's watching the gate and most of the side yard or some of the side yard. And whew, that, was, that was a lot of work, man. I was going up and down, up and down, up and down. And uh, I think we got a total of six cables run. I decided not to run the last two or three, yeah, three ethernet cables that I wanted to, because I don't have cameras for them anyway. Uh, so I, like in this video, you saw that I only had one camera to actually set up and I ran an additional line for another camera. But again, I was like, well, I don't have any more cameras. I'll have to buy those at a later time. So I might as well just forget it for now and we'll get back to it at a later date. So that's the game plan moving forward. But I think we're done with this video and uh, FS, I gotta, I gotta say that 23 gauge Cat6 cable is very nice. Um, I actually had to go out and buy a different set of pass-through RJ45 connectors because for some reason, the ones that I would typically use, well, I typically use Klein, but at my job sites, I always, I'd use Ideal because they're extremely cheap and they work. And I've used these with tons of Ubiquiti cameras, but for whatever reason, I actually had to stop using these ideal pass-through connectors and pick up some Klein ones. And as soon as I switched to the Klein pass-through, my G3, cam G3 Pro camera worked immediately. So I'm not really sure why this connector wasn't working. And yes, I tried two just to make sure that I didn't, technically three, because the first one that I crimped it was fine. It was correct, correctly color coded. The camera was getting some power, but not data, which was weird. So, you know, cut it off, redid it because who knows, maybe I made a mistake, made absolutely sure that one was done right. And it again had problems, third time problems. And it took four tries it, with, and finally with a different connector to make that work. So anyway, we are freaking done. Uh, I think I already said this. FS, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and sending over all that Ethernet cable. I have so much more left over, so that means we'll be using it again in the future. And um, wow, yeah, I, I got nothing else to say. Peace, I guess. See ya.